Okay, I was just going to show very quickly some of the um, the two of the uh, resources or tools as well as asked uh, that, that have been developed at the at the at the Sanger under the Centre for um, Pathogen Surveillance, and uh, I just want to demonstrate them very quickly, so it won't take long at all. Uh, the first one is actually a, a, a program called MicReact, and uh, uh, these are fairly static slides. I'm going to show a little bit of a video pathogen watch. Um, but MicroReact is a, is a tool that's been in, in existence for a while now and uh, uh, looks at uh, sort of the phylogeographic um, signal in, uh, in the genomic data and you can present uh, not only a sort of a, 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 a global view of, uh, of different lineages of cholera but also uh, you can refine that by uh, in a sort of temporal signal. You can use the tree to select out groups of isolates causing different disease and see uh, at what time period they appeared. Um, and, uh, and so although it's actually a fairly, it's a, it's a static tool in that it doesn't really do analysis, it's actually a viewer. It can actually be very good to, uh, uh, once you have your phylogenetic tree and your metadata, to uh, having a look at, uh, and see where your particular isolates in the tree geographically are located and also see how temporally that changes. And I think that's something that uh, will be picked up on later. But there's another one which is actually a pathogen watch and uh, this is a new tool for, um, uh, um, uh, developed uh, by uh, CGPS who was actually, um, uh, and I just want to show you that because actually that one, this one is actually slightly, um, uh, slightly different. You can do a lot of the uh, sort of the, the global type analytics you can for um, in MicroReact. Um, but actually, the, the thing that's actually really interesting about what I think is interesting about Pathogen Watch is you can um, create these report cards. And these report cards are, um, uh, uh, um, are generated uh, on the fly from, uh, from the genomic data based on a, a catalog of questions that are set by a, a community, actually. And, uh, and so it gives you readout of uh, uh, once you've actually taken your genomic data, uh, uploaded it into Pathogen Watch, you get a readout of, of presence or absence, and you can even get um, uh, phylogenetic markers that, that uh, do actually tell you uh, which lineage uh, a particular isolate's from, as well as doing the phylogeography um, that, uh, uh, that, that Micro uh, uh, React does as well. Um, and actually uh, but pathogen watch is it is actually does an analysis on the fly and so what it allows you to do is to actually upload your fastq files from your genome sequencing and it'll actually process them in fairly rapid time and just to show you that this is just a video of of, of dragging and dropping uh, fastq files onto pathogen watch um, to do some analysis hopefully and so these are the uh, uh, FASTQ files, There's, uh, uh, um, uh, these are cholera FASTQ files, uh, including metadata, and uh, this is actually, it's a recording, but it's in real time, and it's actually taking all of those FASTQ files, uh, and it's actually assembling them, and it's uh, um, uh, generating f uh, various different statistics around the quality of the data. And whilst this is the non-glamorous part of uh, genomics, it's actually the most important part, which is actually looking at uh, the quality of your data. And it will even tell you uh, whether your strain is not a Vibrio cholera or it's, uh, it might be a, 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 an Eremonas, for example. And you can look at these genomes and you can look at various different statistics uh, uh, and, uh, uh, um, around them. And this little video will highlight in a second. And so here you can see uh, genome length, you can look at uh, uh, um, coverage, uh, and so on. Uh, and these are, those are all assembly, assembly statistics. And then you get these report cards, and I think the report cards will ultimately be the most useful thing, um, because they actually give you some details about the quality of your sequence, but they also tell you about some of the uh, predictions in terms of the organism and, uh, uh, and how it, re it relates to a reference sequence and so on. And you can even see uh, um, AMR predictions there as well. So it's actually, and I, I really like the, the concept of having a report card because actually I think what it does is it allows the community, whoops, that's starting again.
it allows the community to think about what's, uh, what the priorities are in terms of um, what are the readouts that are, 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 are practically useful from, uh, uh, from sequence data. And whilst I don't think this is the really deep bioinformatic analysis that, that someone would do in academia, I do think this is a very practical solution to having certain reports of the presence or absence of genes based on a very rapid upload of data direct into a database like this. And so this is done um, by the um, Centre for uh, uh, Genomic Pathogen Surveillance, or CGPS, as we normally call it. And these are the team that uh, have developed uh, that, um, led by uh, David Annanson. And that's it. Oh, shit. No, there's one more thing. Sorry. <laughs> the other thing that I'm really passionate about is training. And, uh, and I think with all these tools and everything, the key is training. And uh, we, we do an enormous amount of training through the advanced courses. Uh, and and uh, uh, we're also starting to develop uh, e-learning platforms to look at, uh, to make uh, genomes more accessible. It was something, it's a bit of a privilege to look at, uh, at any genome. And I think actually uh, training people to access the data and to look at those genomes uh, is something that's actually, uh, uh, it's great for us to do. But it's also something that, in the end, if we don't train people to do that, that's a dying, it will be a dying skill because we tend to focus on phylogenetic trees and we tend to use very rapid prediction tools for telling us what genes are present or absent. And actually what these courses aim to do is to build up from scratch, which is to say, what does a gene look like? Where is its promoter? Where does it have a Shine Delgano sequence? Does it, uh, what's a coding strand? And so on. And so actually skills that are really needed, especially now when we're looking at very perhaps curious traits in local epidemiology where uh, you have one strain behaving very unusually, it will be down to all of us really to try and tackle and try to look at those genomes and then deconvolute why our, our particular strains um, are behaving unusually, especially when this moves away from academia and, and, and into public health. Thank you.